Hey, what's up, folks? This is Brock Tree for Brock, giving you a quick update on the system. And I want to share a couple of things with you about my experience with carbon and HLLE, which is the head and lateral line erosion. Uh, first of all, I got a couple of new additions to the tank. Uh, first would be my hippo tank who is the subject of this video. There's a little guy, and he's doing quite well in there with the damsels. And there's our other subject, the purple tank. Purple tank is doing well, of course. Beautiful, it's happy, everyone's thriving, getting along together just fine, as you can see. Uh, yesterday, I decided I was going to change out my carbon. So, Carbon I normally use is either BRS, uh, the Rocks 0.08 or whatever it is, or I use this Reef Spec uh, Carbon, which is my second go to from uh, Red Sea. Okay. So, with that in mind, I put it into what I have down here my operation system, which is my BRS reactor, and I have the GFO and the carbon. Um, what happened is, is that if you don't rinse out your carbon, I just want you to see I have a nice flow on my GFO. If you don't rinse out your carbon properly, or rinse it out well enough, you'll get carbon dust leaching into the tank. So, what that naturally does, is it will affect the hippo tank who are sensitive to the HLLE to the head lateral line disease so I noticed my little guy this morning began to break out in the face he was losing color um, but he was still eating he was so happy you can still see that he's very active very happy fish so what I immediately did I did some research of course and you look it up and you'll see online that at some point sometimes carbon that gets in the water will irritate the skin and begin the HLLE process on your tank so I immediately um, shut off the reactor for a little while and I um, I began to treat the tank with one of my go-to's, which is the Vitachem. So the Vitachem has the vitamins and everything that the fish need in order to um, just have a well-balanced diet. We feed them well. Um, they have plenty of what is this green marine algae they love this stuff with the garlic in it it's amazing I'm going to show you a few other things that I feed them as well uh, I dose regularly my water parameters are on point I have good growth on my corals and my livestock is doing very well in general after I treated it with the Vitacam I treated the tank with the Vitacam I noticed that the head, line, and lateral erosion on my tank disappeared. I didn't expect it to work quite that quickly, which made me think that maybe he started to be stressed over something and maybe, you know, it, it went away way too quickly for me to think that the vitamin, the Vitachem worked quite that fast. But sure enough, he cleared up, as you can see. Uh, he's doing well. So I just want to tell everyone just to be careful with the, the uh, carbon. Make sure it's rinsed out. Make sure, you know, you rinse it out in RO water uh, so that you don't have uh, any dust particles irritating the fish's skin. Okay, with that being said, I want to show people my sump, which I don't normally do. It's curve 5. As you can see, he's a beast. He's doing his thing. I love it down here 
what may look like detritus is actually coralline algae that's growing on the acrylic on the bottom of the sump. Uh, I also have a clump in here. If you can get a good view of it. But trust me when I say there's a pump in there that uh, removes the detritus, keeps the water flowing. I have a marine pure block. I'm going to change that to the bio balls at some point. I do use filter floss and filter socks when it comes to my filtration because I want to get all the small particles out of there as much as possible. Um, filter floats is much easier most days, but I do like to have the socks around just in case. In my refugium area, I just got rid of some of my chato. Uh, my miracle mud is doing well. If you see on the glass, all over the glass, there are copal pods everywhere. Um, so it is healthy, it is doing well. These guys are everywhere. Love them too. <laughs> uh, filter floss once again in my bubble trap. And in my return chamber, I do have a uh, Kimmy Pure Blue, Kimmy Pure Blue, I believe, uh, that I had left over. I threw it in there as well. I do use the JBJ on top off system, which has been working great for me. No problems ever. Uh, for dosing purposes, we are using the JBO dosing pump. And with that, we dose our, if you can see it, we have our Voss bottles here, the uh, calcium, one with alkalinity, and magnesium. And there's also one that has Acro Power in it. Love Acro Power, my corals react great to it. Um, it's been wonderful. Up here, I also stash my API test kits, the basic uh, starter style test kits. They've been doing well for me. I do have a lot of other test kits, as you can see. I do have Salifer test kits as well. Love those as well. Um, but I like the API test kits as a backup, just to double check if something is off. I like to check it with two different test kits, okay. and that's basically the systems down here. Oh, and this is a basic shop light from uh, Home Depot, man. It, the Chato grows crazy. Nothing expensive. I think it cost me less than $20. Okay. Right next to my tank. My quarantine tank is still up and running. Um, I lost my orange back fairy wrasse last week. And so I'm planning on putting another fish in here very soon. I'll give you the update. It's going to be ambitious. But I'm going to try it anyway. But this is a 20 gallon long that I use for my quarantine tank. Uh, we have extra filtration that I've taken out of here. And we also have an Aqua Clear 70 on the back as well. Under that, there's a 20 gallon high that I use for my auto top off water, my RO water. It pumps right into the tank. Works great for me. Never had any problems. It's tucked away. My wife's not mad about it. All is well. When it comes to feeding, these are some of the things I use on a weekly, weekly basis, if not a daily basis. I do use the Ocean Nutrition Formula 2 Flakes and the pellets. I use every now and then the uh, corals love this stuff, man, this microvert. Um, I picked it up on a whim. It's been working very well in conjunction with the reefroids. The reefroids rule. They get the reef roids maybe twice a week and once a week, maybe with the Kent microvert. The Red Sea colors, I haven't really used much of it because I'm not using the Red Sea overall program, but I am going to use this at some point because I don't want to waste it. Um, but I'm going to try it anyway once I get the calculations down. I do use fuel in conjunction with my Acro Power. My Acro Power doses daily maybe about two or three mils and my fuel is actually I use this on Saturdays and Wednesdays so I, I use about uh, I think it's about 10 mils I'm not sure I don't even remember I have it all written down um, but I dose this twice a week as well by hand as well as this the essential elements I uh, put this in once a week just to keep everything you know stabilized and and I know for a fact that I'm getting 
the elements back in the water if uh, I don't get to do my water changes. And even after I do my water changes, I kind of like to put this stuff in here anyway. This is a must have. The green marine algae. The, uh, all the tangs, all the fish love this stuff. They get this daily. So I have to keep this on hand. I have to buy this in bulk. And again, this is the stuff you need to have in order to help fight off that head, line, head lateral line erosion. Um, the Vitachem. It helps out a lot. So far, my Tang is doing well. I'm going to keep an eye on him for the next few days or so. Just to make sure uh, it doesn't come back. But I, I'm, I'm pretty certain that he was irritated with the addition of the carbon. Uh, all the corals are doing well. As you can see my uh, green slime aquapora there is doing well, except for that tip there. I was going to cut it off, uh, but I, I want it to come back to life. And I'm going to give it as much time as possible to see what happens. It is changing colors again, so I'm just going to be patient with it. It's not killing off the rest of the coral at this point, so I'm not really concerned about it yet. Uh, my Montipora is both plating and encrusting, which is awesome. So I'm getting good growth out of everything in the tank. My fish are happy. No, one's had, no one has an outbreak. Um, the one thing, I do have a new toxic hammer coral here. He's not happy. Uh, this started right before I put in the carbon, so I can't even blame that on the carbon. But he does open up a lot more than this. But he, for some reason, he's not happy today. So, everyone else is having a ball. You know, everyone else is doing great. Everyone is fat and happy. Um, and that's all you can ask for. My frog spawn is actually trying to grow up, go up the rock. Which I haven't seen that before. But, hey, as long as he's happy, I don't care either. He can do what he wants to do. And that's pretty much it for right now. I, like I said, I just wanted to give you a heads up with the carbon and the head lateral line erosion thing. Um, be careful with that stuff and make sure that you rinse it out thoroughly in RO water before you put it in your reactors. Or even, a, you know, they say not to rinse it in bags too much, but even with the bags, just give it a good rinse just to make sure everyone's happy and healthy. All right. Bronx Reef of Brock signing out. Y'all be cool. Later.